our kit, you'll see that there's usually a size 14 or 16 French. Right? That's what they call them. And let's see. This looks like. Let me show you this one first. This one is a single lumen catheter. All right? This is a red rubber catheter. This is designed simply to go into the bladder, drain it, and to remove it. In and out. In and out. It's only one lumen. Okay. So this could not stay in the patient. Ms. Clubber, can I ask the question? Sure. Do do some people do in and outs on their cell? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. They yes. sell them. Okay. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the way they I'll have to go. <coughs> My issue to answer your question, the, the sphincter, for whatever reason, are the urethra, the urethra is swollen closed, the sphincter is not performing like it should, and it slams shut, and you can't go. And if you don't go, where does the urine go? Back, back. Backs up where? Into your kidneys and then it backs up where? Into your bloodstream and pretty soon you're going to die and you will. Very serious issue again. And I'm going to pass this around. This is red rubber and it's, it's more rigid than what you would normally see. But look how there are holes at the end. There's not just one, but there are two holes. So if one gets plugged with mucus or something, the catheter or blood, the catheter will still drain. This is a typical catheter that you'll see in your kit. This one is a 16 French. Now, a pediatric one might be an 8 French, just to kind of get, get it in your head as to what sizes would be. This is a 16, and it looks like you've got one lumen, but within this casing, there are actually two lumens, two tubes that go all the way to the end of it. One of them is to hook up to the drainage bag to collect the urine. And what's this one for? Flushing. No. Huh? No. Here. This one is for sterile water that will inflate a balloon. Oh. And there's a balloon, and you'll see it. Um, here we go. Used to be we used to test the balloons before we put them in. Now they say that they're pre-tested at the factory, mm -hmm. and you are not supposed to test the balloon before putting it into the patient. Okay? So, but I'm going to inflate this one. Oh, wow. Cool. That's how far you inflate it? For real? All right. That's now, how it stays in there. That's how it stays in the bladder. That's what keeps it from sliding out. All right? Pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. See, it's, it's not going anywhere unless you have a confused patient and they rip it out. Do you think that's going to cause some trauma? Yes. Yes, it will. Yes. They'll have immense bleeding. Yes. People um, do it now, by the way. Yeah. They get confused. Whatever the reason, they'll yank it out, and it's. I don't. I've seen men do it, and I have no idea. Women, I could. Men I might buy it. Men, now, good deal. On the catheter, okay. it says five cc. Um, silicone coated. Now, it says 5 cc, which means 5 cc's of sterile water fills this balloon. Let me ask you a question. The syringe comes pre-filled with 10 cc's. Should I put the 5 cc's or the whole syringe? Five. Uh, that's what it tells you. Think about it now. Give me some critical thinking here. That's what she's asking. What? Where's the five? There's Huh? Five. There's, wait a minute, five. wait a minute. No, you put the whole wait a minute. There's five cc's in the balloon, but five cc's in the lumen. Right. Okay. There's okay. five cc's in here to, in order to get it all the way here. So, okay. yes, you're right. We would put all 10 cc's, but only five is going to remain in the balloon. Okay. Okay? So, I'll pass that around so y'all can kind of feel it. And usually it's not very, it's not perfectly symmetrical around the catheter. <laughs> But you have to have that in order for it to stay in the in the bladder. So say you didn't put the catheter in well enough, it's going to swell up and it may cause some type of... When we put a catheter in, you're going to hear me say, once you, like in a female, you go in two to three inches. Once you see urine, you're going to go in another inch. Why would we go in that other end to clear the sphincter to clear the sphincter so that we're not inflating that balloon in the neck of the bladder boy that would hurt that would hurt right um, and I've seen that happen before in a male patient 
and there was a lot of bleeding. Oh. I mean, there was blood shooting oh up here. Oh my God! Wow. Ebola clots this big. Oh my God. Mm. Uh, you infected. <laughs> Obesity, with obesity, you have a small right. person in a fat body. That's right. right. Okay. Right? You look at an x-ray of a patient who's obese, here's their skeleton, here's the fat. Mm. Right? So they still have normal everything else. I swear my, I thought my catheter was at least that big. <laughs> <laughs> this Might have one, felt that big. This one's a 26. Need a girl. And this one has 30 cc's in the balloon. Oh. So you probably have, and you can even see the balloon right here, but this one probably, um, usually you have a bigger catheter when a patient's had a catheter for a long, long time. Oh, What's gonna happen is it's gonna out. become stretched and it's gonna start leaking. If you have a catheter that leaks, you have no choice but to take it out, insert another one. Now, you see that IV bag over there? That's a liter, all right? A urinary irrigant or a bladder irrigant is a three liter bag. Mm. So it feels like you're holding a baby. Mm. It's about, I mean, it's about that tall, about that wide. She's not joking, it's big. It is big. Anybody ever seen one? Yep. Mm -hmm. when, they, when they're doing it? Yep. And they hang on the IV pole at the foot of the bed and we adjust the drip. And it's not a very scientific, you know, the doctor will not say, I want it to go at 50 cc's an hour. He'll say, I want the, the irrigant to flow fast enough to keep the urine pale pink, okay? Oftentimes patients will have this because of trauma, like Shay said, they pulled it out and there's a lot of bleeding. Or if the patient's had prostate surgery, they've had that prostate burned out, very vascular, they're gonna have a lot of bleeding. So during the post-op period, they're going to run an irrigant to flush. Now, does that make sense to all of you? Can you visualize it? In your bladder, you've got blood, and blood, if it's not circulating through your little veins, what's it going to do? It's going to clot. It's going to get stringy and clot. So if it clots in your bladder, what does that do to the orifice uh, in the urethra? It's going to close it and you urinate, and you'll end up dying. This Thank you. is so that you can absolutely <clears throat> make sure that the urine keeps flowing. The clotting process will still take place, but it takes a long time. But it, it will clot off. It. If I remember correctly, that means you're going to be emptying that holding bag a lot more often. Can be. Oh, yeah. Right. With, with that much irrigant? Because the irrigant's going to be flowing in into the bladder, and then where's it going? Right back out. Draining back out into the Foley bag. So is it important for you to check the Foley bags? Yes. yes. Right. What should be more, what's going in or what's coming out? What's, what's coming out? What's coming out. Because you've because also got the normal saline. Right. We're going to have the irrigant coming out. We're going to have any blood coming out. And we're going to have urine coming out. What's the irrigant? What, what is that? I mean, like, what's it's an isotonic solution, like a normal saline or, or something along those lines. So from that one line, you put it in, you're all doing something different. All doing something different. 
there are three. If we we should dissect one of these one day. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but it, within this, there are three separate lumens. But it goes into the same place. Which is a good point because sometimes we have to get a urine specimen, and the students will say, "Oh, you stick a needle in in this." Oh no. We don't no. want to do that because you might stick the wrong lumen. Lumen. Right. The port for samples that's on the bag. I'll show you. You got to clamp the bag or something to get a sample. We'll, we'll look at one. Okay. You can get a specimen from the bag within, say, the first few minutes because it's a sterile bag when we start. But after that first, say, 30 minutes, it's no longer sterile because bacteria is going to start growing in it. From the urine. Okay. There is another catheter that I wanted to show you. Can I inflate one of them? Huh? Can I inflate one of them? Can I show them one thing? Okay. Now, Jada said she wanted to inflate one. I want to show you something because this is going to be important when we put a catheter in. When I inflate the balloon and I let go with my thumb, what happens? It's going to oh, back flush. It starts coming back out. So keep that in mind when you put a catheter into the bladder. Before I detach this, because we're not going to walk around with the patient with a syringe hanging. You're going to hold your thumb in while you detach it. All right? Yes, Shay? Uh, I was just, are we going to cover a second amount? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. And separate it so you can, when you push this, it, it doesn't screw on, it just kind of pushes tight into it. I do that all the time. I want to show you this catheter. Now, this is a single lumen catheter, they can come double lumen. What's unique about this one? It's got a bent tip. It's got a bent tip. It sure does. And it's a little more rigid than a standard tip. This is what we call a coude. They love French words, I guess. This is a coude catheter. And it's rigid and it's bent. And this is for a patient who has an enlarged prostate gland that because of this rigidity, they can work the catheter up around over the prostate to get it into the bladder. Because can't get a standard one in. Okay. Do you want to tell them your Let story? Me, I'll give you all my one little story. We had this elderly gentleman. He couldn't urinate. He um, sort of physician wrote for a Foley. We go in to put it in, and I was doing it myself. And again, I'd rather put one in a male than a female any day, except when they have a prostate issue. Okay. Going in, going in, going in. As soon as it would hit the prostate, you'd see it bending out the side. I mean, you could actually see the tube not going through the prostate, okay? Like, out. So pull it out, try, try, try. Got another nurse to try, can't get it in. So we had to call the physician. He comes up there and says, Get me a coup de catheter. Uh, I think he said a 25, I believe, is what he said, which is what? Big. Big. This is a 20. So he big. says, Get me out, have it ready. He comes in, he's ticked off because he's got an attitude, right? He goes in, grabs this man's penis, takes this thing down, and starts just digging like it. And blood literally shoots oh, out. Man. Out the end, and there's blood like going everywhere, and he's fighting. And like, Finally, he gets it in, okay? And y'all think I'm exaggerating because you know I exaggerate. I'm not exaggerating. It, I was like oh. flabbergasted. So he gets the Foley, takes it, puts it in, I mean, attaches the Foley, hands it to us, and, and we finish. Whenever I went back out, he goes, you think I was being mean and cruel, don't you? And I said, to be honest, yes, there was no reason to hurt that man like that. Now, he did put, in the, in the video, it shows that you put lidocaine in the uh, urethra, which is very, to me, it looks very uncomfortable, but nobody complains. But... He said, what were, the, what were the options? If we didn't get the Foley, what was the option? He dies. No. One other, other than that, surgery. I mean, physical, let's go down to the OR and prep and do the room and the, all the, the whole thing and put in a 
super pubic um, ostomy or something, okay? He said, I had to do it. And as far as him bleeding, it was either that or go to surgery anyway. But it, surgery was the only other answer. So I kind of understood a little bit better, but I'm telling y'all, it was a violent fighting, trying to get this thing in thing. It wasn't nice at all. But if he's bleeding, would they have to use the triple? The triple lemon? The triple lemon? The triple lemon in? They, it didn't end up where they did. He you put know, blood they shot. Um, I'll never forget where um, the blood did shot. Could have one that's triple lemon? Yeah, I'm not. I'm sorry? They probably do. His, his prostate, sure. as men age, not all men. You know what I'm saying? How did the patient react? Right. As he was He was like, in grimace, he was hurting. All right? He was like, let me go. Let but me no, it didn't take <laughs> long, y'all, but it was it was like oh, really violent. <laughs> it was violent. So, Are we using sterile water? Sometimes. Sterile water. Okay. That will come in your kit. Okay. Okay. All right. I need to clean up my mess. In your kit. Holy catheter so, choice. So, so when you use a cuneate catheter, are you supposed to twist, or did he just have to twist for that specific they situation? They probably have to. If you're going in and you meet resistance, they tell you to turn the catheter, any kind of catheter, and see if it will. Y'all remember now what this Carter is saying is that the prostate is like a donut. It's about the size of an almond. Okay. So whenever you look at it. It is directly in line, the urethra comes down, everything that, sperm and everything else that leaves a man comes through the prostate, okay? It's part of the reproductive system in making, what? What do we call it? Just to clear. Not the sperm stuff, the babies. Anyway. You have to locate the whole thing, the top of that hole in that almond in order for it to go through. Normally, it's just going to follow the urethra and go right through, right around. No big problem. But as mid-age, that it um, it closes, it hypertrophies, and it, it'll close ever so slightly, and it gets a little more difficult, a little more difficult to for it to go through. Okay? You hear a lot of old men, and they'll say, "Your stream just ain't what it used to be," and that's what they're talking about. Is their prostate? Is is plugged up some, but it's a normal part of aging. So do y'all feel like you understand a little better what we're putting I hope, into the patient? I'm not, I'm not uh -huh. feeling it from from killing them. I ain't feeling it. What? That you understand? Oh yeah, I get it. She said she couldn't picture it. I said, and I asked Jada how she got all four so. <laughs> I okay. pulled this arrangement a little bit too hard. Right? <laughs> so she learned what not to do. Exactly. All right. So what I'd like to do now is I'd like to show you on the mannequin exactly what we expect of you in your checkoff. Awesome. All right.